learning outcomes. After finishing this video, you will be able to measure the beta and alpha of an investment, split the returns from investments into three components. Risk and return. The conventional view is that there is no free lunch. To increase expected return, you must increase risk. But actually there is one free lunch in finance, diversification. So everyone should diversify, and so everyone ought to own the market portfolio. Investing is global. Capital scars the world for the best opportunities. What goes on elsewhere affects India. What goes on in China affects the rest of the world. And competition is global. For example, is Cognizant an American company? It's a very successful IT services provider with the majority of its employees in India. But diversification is not simply across companies or even industries in one market. Diversification ought to be practiced globally. Purely domestic investors do not reap the full benefits of diversification and expose themselves to a lot of risk. For example, if you were a Greek investor with a purely domestic portfolio, how would you have done in the last few years? So according to the CAP, everyone can maximize expected return with the least expected risk by holding the global market portfolio. That should be your base case. Owning the global market portfolio is every investor's natural right. It gives the investor a perfectly fair share of the market's total return as well as the total risk. If the market goes up 10%, and you own the market portfolio, you make 10%. Making your portfolio like the market is easy. You can do it through index funds or index futures. You can even do it yourself. And the great advantage is you don't need to do any research. So with this as background, we arrive at a qualitative definition of beta. Beta is an investment that is a perfect microcosm of the entire market. It offers a perfectly fair share of the market's total return as well as total risk and is extraordinarily cost effective. So what does beta really mean? You know, if you like the risk return trade off in the market, you can invest 100% of your money in the market and your beta would then be one. But is that too risky for you? You can invest less than 100%. Leverage down, as they say. Allocate a portion of your, of your portfolio to cash. In this case, your beta is less than one. But if you want a higher expected return, you ought to be willing to tolerate higher risk. You may leverage up, and this can easily be done, particularly with derivatives. Then your beta is greater than one. Once you select a level of beta, you have a certain expected return and a certain level of risk. So if you select a beta of 1.2 and the market returns 10%, then your return ought to be 12%. Now, what if you want to increase your expected return but keep your risk unchanged? Or what if you want to decrease your risk but keep your expected return unchanged? Now we go to the concept of alpha. A qualitative definition of alpha, given your, ex, your selected level of beta, you will be expected to make a certain return. Alpha is the difference between your actual return and the expected return in your portfolio given your selected beta. 
the financial world has figured out that alpha is good. But they've not actually figured out what it actually is, whether there are supply constraints, how to get it, and why it's good. So let's try and clarify some of these concepts. Beta and alpha. The risk of the market is shared between all participants. And it is shared based on the level of beta each participant has selected for himself. The return of the market is also shared between all participants. And the expected return is given by the level of each participant's beta. But the actual return of each participant is, well, the actual return they receive. And the difference between the actual and the expected return for each participant is his or her alpha. The sum of alpha is equal to zero. In aggregate, the sum of alpha must equal zero. The finite amount of return per unit of risk available in the market means that extra return received by one investor must be taken from another. This is an extraordinarily important point. Alpha must sum up to zero. Alpha is not generated, mined, or produced. It is taken from somebody, and it is taken directly from other investors. Now and forever, the total alpha in the world will be zero. What are the implications of a zero-sum game? If the expected alpha is zero, and there are costs, what you'd realize is that you have to be smarter or luckier than other investors to get alpha from them. Yet there are thousands of funds in the world all hunting for alpha. Why? Everyone actually thinks they have some edge. And importantly, they get paid to try. But one certainty is many, many of these will end up being alpha providers. Alpha is wonderful. Alpha is wonderful. Alpha is technically excess return with no excess risk. Literally, free money. Of course, in reality, there are risks. And the risk is that you actually got negative alpha. But alpha risks are unique and very different from market risk. Beta risks are earnings, GDP, macroeconomic. Alpha is so desirable because it comes from taking something different from market risk. Real alpha shows perfect immunity from even the worst market crises. And alpha is literally the single best thing you can add to any portfolio because it has zero correlation to anything. So now let's examine alpha uh, with, with, a, with a few pictures to try and reinforce some of these concepts that we've just gone through. We understand that beta is that return that comes from the market. And alpha is that which comes from somewhere else. Either a good model or manager skill or luck.